Hey friends, Ash here with GentSense. Today I'm coming at you guys with 10 must-own cheap fall fragrances. I have heard your calls. Your calls of give me cheap. People love that. People love to get things for cheap. And that's what this video is about. Some of the fragrances I'm going to talk about today are ones that I have mentioned in the past. Some of the fragrances I'm going to talk about are ones I have not mentioned in the past. But we've got a good smattering here of fall fragrances. Stuff for younger guys. Stuff for more mature guys. It's a lot of stuff to talk about, so let's jump into it. I'm gonna leave links in the description below for each one of these fragrances at fragrance discounters. So if you do wanna pick them up, make sure to buy from a discounter, save yourself some money. I mean, that's the whole point of getting a fragrance for cheap. And also, if you don't mind, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not, like the video and leave a comment below. You know the good stuff. And yes, before any of you mention it in the comments below, I got a bit of a sunburn yeah, that's what happens when you're out in the sun for five hours straight with sunglasses on and no sunscreen. This. I have maybe learned my lesson though. I might not do it in the future, but I probably will. Whatever. Let's just jump into the fragrances. First one I want to talk about is from Jacques Bogart, and the fragrance is Bogart Pour Homme. I like to just say that, Bogart. Now, this fragrance does not have the greatest looking presentation as far as putting across how the fragrance might smell. And what I mean by that is when you look at the presentation, if you know nothing about the fragrance, you look at that bottle, you're probably gonna think it smells like a fragrance from 1982, because that's kind of the vibe that that fragrance bottle is giving off. It doesn't look very modern, at least not to me. But don't be fooled by that bottle. The fragrance is actually really nice. It's one that you can pull off all throughout fall. A lot of people say that it has kind of a tobacco vibe to it, even though tobacco is not an official note in the fragrance. The main note, the most prominent note in the fragrance is actually Tonka. So this one is gonna be a warm, sweet kind of scent. There's also lavender in here, there's patchouli, there's orange blossom, there's a good amount of notes. But like I said, uh, for a lot of people it does come across tobacco-y. So this fragrance has drawn comparisons to actually a lot of designer scents that don't actually smell that similar to one another. Uh, the main thing that they do have in common is a tobacco note. I've seen some people compare it to One Million. I've seen some people compare it to Mugler's Pure Havan and a number of other fragrances as well. And while it doesn't actually smell exactly like any of those fragrances, it's in the same vein, in the same style. So if you like those fragrances, you'll probably like this one. And the big positive here, the price. This one is way cheaper than any of the fragrances like that that it gets compared to. So first one starting off this list, Jacques Bogart, Bogart Pour Homme. Now I want to mention one just really quickly, just want to pop this into the list, even though it's not one of the official 10, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. Body Koros by Yves Saint Laurent, or depending on where you look, Koros Body, but yeah, Body Koros. Now, when you hear the name Koros, if you're familiar with it, you're probably not gonna think that's a fragrance that you're gonna wanna smell like, unless you're a fan of 80s powerhouse fragrances, because that's what that one is. And the reason this one is not one of the official 10 is because this one is gonna run you at discounters close to $50. So I didn't know if that was cheap enough to make a cheap list, but it's close. So I wanted to throw it in here anyway. This one has benzoin, eucalyptus, incense, and cedar as some of the notes in the fragrance. And it is not the same as the original Koros. It's, it's quite different. So this one is not gonna come across like a, an animalic in your face 80s powerhouse. Basically I'm saying it's it's more wearable. That's a good thing for most of you. So this one is sweet, it's powdery, it's smoky, and it is decidedly masculine, just not in the original Koros way. So I just wanted to bring that one up really quickly. Body Koros, if you're unaware of it, never smelled it, check it out. And that one is gonna be one of the ones that's better suited for guys middle-aged and up. It is a big attention grabber though. Next up, let's go with the Calvin Klein. We'll go with Euphoria 
intense. This one does have oud as one of the notes, and uh, I know what you're probably thinking. Calvin Klein, oud, that doesn't sound like it would go together. It doesn't really sound like it would work, but it does. It's a really nice fragrance. Is it real oud, natural oud? <laughs> no. There's also amber, ginger, pepper, and myrrh in this fragrance. It's pretty sweet in the opening, but then as it dries down, it gets a little bit darker, warmer, and spicier. And that amber really comes out as it dries down. This one is a great fall fragrance, gets overlooked a little bit, which probably has to do with the fact that it is a Calvin Klein. Most Calvin Klein fragrances don't really get a whole bunch of love, and that's because most of the time they smell pretty cheap. Yeah, because they are cheap. This one's good, this one's worth checking out. Euphoria Intense. Let's go from one intense to another intense. EC Miyake Low DC Intense. Now, a lot of fragrances from this house could make this list because typically fragrances from Miyake are not that expensive at discounters with some exceptions, but usually they're not that expensive. And this one is one of the cheap ones. This one has Yuzu, Papyrus, Nutmeg, Lotus, and incense. And the two notes that I pick up the most of are the incense and the yuzu. That does make sense because yuzu is really what the low DC line is known for, that yuzu citric pop in the opening. This one uses incense to make it better suited for cooler weather as opposed to the original low DC, which of course is a spring and summertime staple for lots of you out there. So this one is another one kind of like Euphoria Intense that a lot of people overlook and don't seem to pay much attention to, but the price on it is right, the wearability is there, the versatility is there, and the potential compliment factor, if that is important to you, is there. So Isi Miyake, low DC Intense, check it out. Next up, let's go to Carolina Herrera one of the 212 flankers, Sexy Men. It's not the greatest flanker name I've ever heard, but go with it. Now this one's a little bit interesting. It gets compared to Le Mal, the original Le Mal by Jean-Paul Gaultier. It gets compared to Luna Rosa Sport. Actually, I've seen it compared to a number of different fragrances. Now, the Luna Rosa Sport comparison does make sense if you're gonna compare it to Le Mal because Luna Rosa Sport is commonly compared to Le Mal itself. This one doesn't have lavender as an official note, but it does have floral notes as an official note. So realistically, there's some lavender in here. There is also vanilla, which again, kind of drawing that comparison to Le Mal. There's Gayak wood, there's cardamom, there's pepper in here. This one also commonly will come across to people smelling like a soda or Dr. Pepper. So it has that kind of effervescent, sparkling sweetness to it. And even though this one does not get a huge amount of love from the fragrance community, uh, it has been out for a while to be fair. So it's not like it's a brand new fragrance or anything like that, but I digress. Even though it doesn't get a huge amount of love from the fragrance community, in terms of just getting attention from people that are around you, it does really well. And that is kind of a common thing with the 212 line of fragrances from Carolina Herrera. Most of them, not all of them, but most of them, pretty good at pulling attention and compliments and things like that when you're in uh, group settings or around a lot of people. Uh, but they don't get a ton of love from the fragrance community at large. For the price though, 212 Sexy Men, really nice for fall time. Next up, Bentley. And you're probably thinking I'm gonna go Bentley for Men Intense because that is kind of the community darling, the fragrance community darling, where it's commonly said that that fragrance has niche quality at an unbelievable value. And that's true. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely true. But for fall, I'm going with just Bentley for Men. Drop the Intense. This one has rum, leather, cinnamon, and benzoin and it does have a strong similarity to Bentley for Men Intense, which itself has a strong similarity to Idole de Louban by Louban, which is a niche fragrance in case you're unaware of it, and Olfactive Studio Chambre Noir, which is also a niche fragrance. So while it does have that similarity to Bentley for Men Intense and those other fragrances, this one 
is more wearable, more versatile overall, and also better suited for fall when it's not quite as cold as it is in winter. Bentley for men in tents could be just a little too much for fall, especially if we're talking early fall, like we're about to start heading into. It's still not really cool, so Bentley for men in tents at that point could be, like I said, a bit much, but Bentley for men would work really well. It's gonna give you a similar vibe, similar feeling, just toned down, not quite as aggressive, and more versatile. Oh, and the quality, really high. Thumbs up. Next up, Rojas Man that comes in the interesting bottle. It has cappuccino, it has lavender, it's got vanilla, it's got raspberry. It is sweet. It gets compared to uh, Michael Jordan Legend, which is another very affordable fragrance, and gets compared to Bond Number no. 9's New Harlem, which is not an affordable fragrance, and also not at all easy to find. And just kind of an aside on New Harlem, a lot of people say it's discontinued because it's not been available for sale uh, for quite some time now. Bond Number no. 9 says that it is not discontinued, but that they cannot source all the ingredients that they need for the fragrance and that when they can, it will be back. Um, I don't know about that, but just letting you know. Anyway, back to this fragrance. It is not the exact same as New Harlem, but it is a sweet coffee scent that's really nice, relaxing, and uh, warming for fall. So this one is gonna give you a similar feeling as New Harlem. Not the exact same fragrance, but a similar feeling, similar vibe at a much, 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 much lower cost. So that one is gonna be for you guys out there that want a nice, sweet coffee sort of scent. Let's do another Calvin Klein, CK1 Shock. <laughs> this one used to be hyped. I remember years back, uh, people in the fragrance community were like, oh, CK1 Shock is one of the best cheap fragrances you can buy. It's one of the best bangs for your buck. It has crazy longevity, great projection. It's a beast of a fragrance. And slowly over time, people stopped caring. Now, I myself do like the fragrance a pretty good amount, especially considering the price. I know my friend Tommy at Studio Sense, he really likes the fragrance as well. This one will often be compared to a like a cherry syrup sort of tobacco scent, almost like um, a cherry syrup dipped tobacco. This one also has amber, patchouli, cardamom, and lavender as some of the notes in the fragrance. Some people will say that the performance has gone downhill on this one over the years and that it is no longer the beast that it once was. The beast has been contained. Very sad. My bottle is years old and obviously I get good performance from the fragrance. Uh, Tommy from Studio Sense, his bottle is newer than mine. And from what I hear, it works out pretty well for him. So I can't sit here and tell you, yes, it's much weaker or no, it's still extremely powerful. But from what I hear, it's okay. All right, these last three are gonna be fragrances I have talked about in the past, um, more recently than some of the other ones I've talked about in this video. Starting off, with Halloween Man X, which I absolutely love. Coffee, whiskey, tonka, cinnamon, some of the notes in the fragrance. Has a blackjack accord, which is supposed to be leather and whiskey and coffee. Uh, essentially, they're trying to make it sound really masculine. Right, a blackjack accord, whoa. This one really gets to me because of the coffee note in it. I love the coffee note. It's sort of a roasted coffee, so it's not really super sweet, it's just, got kind of a burnt edge to it that I really dig. The leather, uh, I don't get as much of that, a little bit as it dries down, but it's not really leather intensive. I do get, though, more of that booze, that whiskey. Get a touch of that, lend some nice sweetness to the scent. You like that? It was like, I don't know what that is. Sweetness. Halloween Man X, one that I really was surprised by the first time I smelled it. I thought it was gonna suck, to be honest. I thought the quality was not gonna be there. I thought it was gonna be kind of a throwaway scent, but then I smelled it fell in love, especially for the price. This is one that does have a bit of a tendency to go in and out of stock at discounters. If it is ever out of stock at a discounter and you're wanting to pick it up, don't overpay. 
this is a fragrance you should pick up in the 30-ish dollar range. When you start creeping into $50 and above, you're paying too much. Now the last two are both from the same house, both from the same line, so it's kind of a cop out. It's Ferragamo Womo, Ferragamo Womo Signature. This is another one that I did not have really high expectations for, talking about the original Womo, but then I smelled it and I thought, hey, this is way better than I thought it'd be. It's actually really good. Sound like Jerry Seinfeld. It's actually really good. So the original Ferragamo Womo is known for its tiramisu note. So it's kind of a sweet coffee-ish note. There's also Ambroxan in there. There's cardamom in there. There's tonka in there. And it is ultimately a warm, sweet, slightly spicy sort of fragrance. Like with a lot of warm, sweet, spicy type scents though, big compliment puller, big attention grabber. Womo's signature though, is the one that I prefer if I were taking only one. If I were gonna get just one of these, it would be Womo's signature. I feel like it's a little bit improved, slightly more mature and a little bit darker. And that's mainly gonna be because of leather being in Womo's signature, though the coffee note comes across more coffee-ish and less tiramisu-ish in signature. You can still own both of them, though for some of you out there that's going to be redundant because there is a definite similarity between the two. Overall, you might be able to say that the original Womo is the more versatile of the two fragrances and Signature is a little bit better suited for evening wear, but they're both great. And with that, I'm gonna wrap this video up. Those are some fragrances that I think you should absolutely check out that are not expensive, but are very versatile, potential compliment pulling kind of fragrances that work great in fall, both day and night. All right, guys, it's gonna do it for me. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.